In January, Elon Musk announced that for the first time, his company Neuralink implanted a brain chip in a human as part of a preliminary clinical trial. This is fascinating. Neuralink aims to help people living with debilitating conditions communicate and control external devices with their thoughts. And I will read, sit down, uh, sit down rather with the patient who received that implant in an exclusive broadcast interview. He is with us now in Atlanta, Georgia. Will, good to see you. And, and this story here, it's a big one. It certainly is, DeMarco. It's uh, the future is arriving faster and faster these days. And it was my honor to get to sit with Nolan Arbaugh, who was a fantastic subject, a great guy. He's been through a lot, paralyzed for nearly eight years now. But he says this Neuralink device has really changed his life. I didn't have anything to wake up for in the morning. Um, and this has changed that for me. In a GMA broadcast exclusive, Nolan Arbaugh, the first human implanted with a Neuralink chip in his brain, is telling his story. I accepted that I was paralyzed and that that was my life. I always held out hope that it would all get better. At 22 years old, Nolan says he dove headfirst in waist deep water, struck something and sustained a spinal cord injury. He couldn't move from the shoulders down. From the time of your injury until earlier this year, what was your daily life like? I mean, one thing about being paralyzed is that there's a lot of time to sit and think. And so I thought through basically my whole life and realized all the mistakes I'd made and what I could do better. Then just last year, Noland, now 30, receiving a life-changing opportunity. One day, one of my buddies from college uh, called me up. Um, we talked pretty regularly and he was like, hey, Neuralink, they opened up the human trials. Um, and I said, what's Neuralink? Neuralink, co-founded by Elon Musk, is an experimental implantable brain computer interface, or BCI, a chip surgically implanted by a robot and connected by threads to a patient's brain that allows the patient to control a computer or smartphone with their mind. Hey, this is all from there to there. Yeah, man. <laughs> wow. Neuralink is not the only company working on this technology. Several others are also testing their BCIs in paralyzed volunteers. Noland now joins that small group as Neuralink's first patient. I was just very happy that I would be a part of something that I believe is so monumental in this next step forward of helping people with paralysis. What can you do now with the chip implanted that you could not do prior? Um, I can control a computer just like anyone else can, which is not something I was able to do beforehand. You just played some music? Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> do you worry because you are the first patient that something unforeseen could go wrong now that this is inside your head? Mm, I wouldn't say worry. It was something where I knew that if I did this, then it would take a lot of headache and heartache away from the people down the road. Just last week, news that some of the threads in Nolan's brain had retracted, affecting the performance of the device. How'd you take the news when they told you that the threads had retracted? Yeah, it was really hard. It was very, very hard to give up all of the amazing things that I was able to do. I think I had like cried basically afterwards. The problem becoming an opportunity for the makers of Neuralink to explore solutions. The reason we do clinical trial um, and you know, early feasibility trial is to uncover these sort of issues as early as possible before they get marketed. And we rolled up our sleeves and you know, found various different ways to, you know, for Nolan, be able to recover his performance, which we have successfully been able to do. As for Nolan, the future of the technology only looks bright. It's going to be amazing when someone can have a spinal cord injury, go into a hospital, get surgery, and walk out a couple days later. I think it's gonna happen. I don't think it's as far away as people might think. Mm -hmm. And Will, you mentioned that this isn't the first of this kind of technology. Why do you think we're hearing so much about this particular one? Well, there is the Elon Musk of it all, Eva, the billionaire founder, of course, draws attention to everywhere he goes. Neuralink's main thing is the, the tiny little threads that are thinner than a human hair that are implanted in a participant or a patient's brain. That is what they're advancing uh, the most in their technology. There are a lot of companies doing it. Elon Musk does help bring the attention. I can't get enough of this story. So when could this implant be made more widely available? 
Well, DeMarco, you know, anything with medical device, medical breakthroughs generally, the time horizon is measured in years. But DJ Su, the co-founder of Neuralink, did tell me that his company is planning to implant participants number two and three in these trials in just the coming months. So they are looking to ramp up uh, these trials, as are other companies of similar nature. Some fascinating stuff. Well, you mentioned that there was a problem with the connective threads. So what has Neuralink done to fix that problem for the future? Well, Dr. Darian, what, they're, what the problem was those threads retracting, which basically in layman's terms means that the device wasn't working as well. But what Neuralink did was go in, tweak the algorithm, and they claim now his BPS, bits per second, that is the the standard measurement for how this stuff works. They've actually improved it, they say, versus when Nolan was initially implanted. So this is all uncharted territory for the most part, so they're figuring it out as they go. But well, look how far we've come. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, Will, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Good to see you.